So here I have the limited D23 convention exclusive legacy lightsaber box set of Obi-Wan Kenobi. How hard was it to get my hands on these? What new lightsaber is in here? And do they all sound the same? I'm gonna answer all those questions, so don't go anywhere. Hey, thank you guys so much for clicking on my video. I really appreciate it. This is Finding the Force, where we cover all things Star Wars, but especially lightsabers. And I will be your host as always, Obi Dad Kenobi. Wow, I, feel good. I actually just got off a plane, came home because I, I refused to be the last one to review something. I uh, haven't even unpacked yet. I was so excited to show you guys that Disney totally surprised everybody and dropped a limited exclusive D23 Obi-Wan Kenobi box set with a brand new Thin Neck Legacy lightsaber. You never know what Disney's going to do. I'm telling you guys, it just drives me nuts. Um, by the way, what do you guys think, huh? Um, I'm going for a little bit simple for the background, still getting used to it. I kind of miss the green screen, but I can't wait to start wearing more of my green shirts. I had to avoid green at all costs, green sabers and shirts, but now I can do whatever I want. Um, this was a pain in the butt to get. What you had to do was this was an exclusive uh, Disney merchandise like store, and you could only get inside the store if you were on your phone at six in the morning, and within seconds, you had to get on there, just like Rise of the Resistance, right, back during the, uh, the, the online queue days, and you had to like get there and tap like fast enough to get into the online queue so that it would call up your time at some time in the afternoon, and you could go in and buy, here's a picture, tons of Disney stuff, mostly limited edition pins, I guess, uh, Disney fans are going bonkers for dolls. I don't know. They only had two Star Wars items. This box set and there was like an action figure set from like the vintage Star Wars. It's like a reproduction that they're doing. Um, but I had to get this and I have to thank my buddy Scott, Disneyland nurse, for being my travel buddy and for being the one who was able to get this. And uh, I love it and I have to show you guys the new Saber. It is so awesome. So let's check this out. The song that it plays when you open this, um, this is actually the only box set that I own. I think I'm gonna keep it. It plays the sweet magical music when Luke in A New Hope asks old Ben if he knew who Obi-Wan was because R2-D2 says that he belongs to him. And then you hear this. Oh, I have not heard that name in a long time and I don't want to trigger copyright. So inside the box, uh, it says it's limited to 3,000. I have 2,972, which I'm actually kind of proud of. I'm, as long as I'm near like the beginning or the end, I think it's kind of cool. Obi-Wan Kenobi legacy set, and it's uh, a quote from Obi-Wan Kenobi. This is the weapon of a Jedi Knight, not as clumsy or random as a blaster, an elegant weapon for a more civilized age. We all know that quote, one of our favorites, right? When you open it, there's this nice big uh, piece of foam so that you could transport this or roll it around and the sabers aren't gonna be flopping around and, and hitting this nice metal piece here. So we remove this foam covering and voila, let me show you guys the three Obi-Wan Kenobi legacy lightsabers. Look at that. Oh man, I was so excited. Scott, you're the best man. I was so excited to see this new one from A New Hope. And I'll show you some of the differences here from uh, the TV series. There we go, I had to just adjust my Sarlacc so you could actually see him. Conveniently placed next to Boba Fett's helmet. Huh, huh? So we'll just bring him out of the box here. We have the Obi-Wan Kenobi episode one hilt, which is retired, according to Disney, right? So retired. This one I just reviewed recently as probably one of the coolest and best legacy lightsabers, TV series hilt. And the brand new episode four, A New Hope. This is so cool. Disney, you guys are crazy, man. Still no Qui-Gon. They're so silly. They show us a Qui-Gon and then they, they put out like four or five lightsabers that are not Qui-Gon yet. Um, but man, this is so cool. It is uh, more weathered because this occurs after the, uh, the TV series. So let's take a look at the design real quick. Um, the pummel 
and man, all the metal is aged. Even the pummel, as you can see here, I'll be making a lot of comparisons to the, uh, the TV series, how the metal midsection and the pummel are far more shiny. They're not chrome, but close shiny in the TV series where when episode four rolls around and when Obi-Wan stumbles upon Luke, I mean, there's just so much gray wear and weathering to the pummel and especially, oh, so cool. The midsection, they stay true to some of the design of the replica, including these lines and these little kind of black holes, which is a part of the, the clamp that goes with the flash gun handle, which is what this was. This was a part that was used. I love the bubble strip, their first legacy lightsaber bubble strip. And the buttons, of course, have been changed out to look more chunky. And I think there's no ring around this button here because on the replica, I think somewhere during filming, it could have been lost. Really, because if you look at the actual replica of this saber, I think you can see like an outline mark where this this used to be, used to have a, another ring around this button, but it's gone. So they really paid attention to detail with this saber. And the neck, worn in gray, even the upper neck, really has like a shade where it's like looks like dark copper. Um, it's not just the same color. They didn't skip that detail. And the whole upper emitter cup is weathered and dinged and looks aged just like Obi-Wan, right? Wow. They even got the clamp here, which isn't here on the uh, TV series. So you can see, I'll put them side by side. Let's take a look here. Here is a close-up look. Feast your eyes, you guys. Oh, man. That, this is probably, this is my new favorite legacy lightsaber of all time. Something to note, not crazy about this. Uh, CE and like, and like the serial number, you know? I don't think that's that's uh, super necessary. And it's really unfortunate because when you display it, you might wanna show off the buttons. But if you just displayed it like this, it's you can still see it from the front. So you know what you'd have to do? Just that, that's all you really gotta do. So you can display it however you want and just kind of move them off to the side so you can't really see that. Not a big deal. Just like all the other sabers at this price point, there's a lot of lettering, Lucasfilm, the year, stuff like that on the pummel cap, that's okay. Love the bubble strip, it feels so cool. And the clamp here doesn't wiggle, doesn't move, which I'm glad, because if it did, then it would just, you know, something wrong would happen to it. Get lost, get loose or something. Buttons don't work, single button activation switch, we know that. Excellent weathering on the upper grip and the lower grip. You guys see that? Everything has weathering or some detail to it. So awesome, they have these brush strokes here on the, the lower part of the emitter. And the emitter cup looks dinged like it's been dropped. Love that. It's the perfect sabers that make me nervous. And let's do a close up here of the new and the TV series hilt, which just came out like a month or two ago. Super recent. A little side by side comparison here. This is where it's beginning to get dirty. Um, the episode three is gonna look way more immaculate. I'm so glad that so these new stickers do not leave residue. I don't have to run and get some gooby gone. Maybe that happened with some of the Force Effect sabers for you guys who, who have uh, collected those over the years. Nobody wants to get the gooby gone. See what I'm talking about here, different buttons. Whether you have a, you like the bubble strip or the kind of computer chip activation switch. Weathered a little bit on the TV series, weathered more on A New Hope. Man, what a great job, what a cool display piece. Let's turn them on. So under the second foam pad here, we have the blade upper half for the TV series Obi-Wan. So I know, I know, there's nothing flattering about this, okay? I know, but like I've said before, come on guys, think about it. Out of your lightsabers, how often are they on display and how often are they turned on having fun in your bedroom when your girlfriend's asleep. Hmm. Riddle me that, Batman, okay? Probably on display more than we'd want them to. And when you are having fun with it, you know, hopefully it's dark. And, uh, cause nobody, don't turn your sabers on during the day, guys. Seriously, it's just, it doesn't look right. You, it never looks like color, which is why, speaking of which, uh, my good buddy, my good buddy has his own business, Cosplay Covers. This would have been awesome for D23 or any conventions you're going to. Looks way better for pictures than anything that you can even turn on, even with the NeoPixel, uh, because it's just so bright in the conventions. So he makes these really cool covers 
that all also have like a neat plasma texture to them as well. And I need to put the batteries in this, but this is my Obi-Wan Force Effect Saber. So let's take a stroll down memory lane and uh, remember what the episode one hilt sounds like. A little bit of creaking with this blade, a little bit of packing tape around the upper half is really gonna help fix that. And like I've said before, some of the swing sound effects sound kind of a little lazy, almost makes us think the blade's not moving very quickly. Cool. Okay, now on to the TV series, Saber. Cool, very traditional. Yep, got the Obi-Wan, again, traditional hum. Classic snapping clash effects. And deactivation sounds really cool. I'm gonna keep a blade in that one so we can do a quick comparison with the episode four, the new Obi-Wan Kenobi hilt. Listen to this. Oh, that is loud. Oh, yes. I love that hum. It sounds like episode four, Star Wars, 1977. Oh yeah, look, look at that. And not bad for some spins. If you have small hands, maybe not so much. Clash effects. Sweet, unique clash effect sounds. Deactivation, okay. Side by side, here we go. TV series. Episode four. Okay, same activation. <laughs> Similar sounds because it's the same saber, but does have a different, it's like a different octave almost. Okay, but for all intents and purposes, I think they're about the same swing and activation. I know the clashes are different though. TV series. And episode four. Totally different clash effects. De deactivation here, okay, TV series. Episode four. Different deactivations, mostly the same sound effects. This has a lower hum. Okay, I'm gonna say there's different sounds for the two sabers. It uh, takes a trained ear, but I can hear the difference. What do you guys think? Take, take a quick look at the upper emitter half, the blade upper half of the saber with the blade in it here. Got, I mean, look at that, it's like airbrushed. I mean, they added some, some brush marks on it. This line is straight, which is not, I can't say the same for the Cal Kestis. So, new favorite Galaxy's Edge lightsaber, so cool. Tell me what you guys think. The, uh, this is the price down here on the screen. So it came out to about 600 just retail with the item plus tax, but you got three Galaxy's Edge sabers, which I think brings the box to about $100 for this weathered um, arabesh foam travel crate for your three obi-wan sabers tell me what you guys think is this a good value and comment down below if you like the new episode four saber and which one is your favorite out of the three thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and especially watching to the end of my video i really appreciate that you guys stay safe out there and make sure to have an awesome star wars day See you later, guys. See you next time. Yes.